to eat meat, there are certain types of meat that you, uh, you can eat. And the Bible talks about clean and unclean meats. And it's all found in the book of Leviticus if you'd like to check it up for us. Otherwise, um, it is not entirely correct that we, the, the SDA church, are vegetarians. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, a question was just handed to me. And it says, what is it like to know that there are hundreds of people, perhaps more, that are fans of Pitkern? And some right here at PUC, Pacific Union College. Is it an enlightening feeling? Is it a comforting feeling to know that there are people who, are, who feel like family to you, who are not necessarily? You like having fans? Well, I guess it means that we're not forgotten. Yes, true, true. Well, that's, you know, the uh, expression, you don't call, you don't write. Well, we're calling and we're writing. <laughs> um, somebody else wanted to know about the medical facilities on the island and treatment for serious problems. How do you handle that, Mike? Well, the best way to deal with uh, those sorts of things is to stay healthy, but if you manage to find yourself uh, uh, getting sick, uh, we have a medical clinic here with a doctor. A doctor is uh, stationed here for about 12 months. And uh, if you need to uh, get serious uh, medical situations dealt with, then we need to uh, find a way to get you off the island. And uh, that could be a, a bit of a, um, you know, some difficulty at times. And uh, but that's how we tend to deal with our, our medical situation here. But the, the 12 months station of a doctor does give the islanders a bit of reassurance in relation to health. Mm -hmm. And for serious uh, problems, you try to get people off island? You try to get yes, them off island? Yes. Okay, and, and what method do you use? How does that happen? Um, well, the, so far, the only method that um, is available to us is by sea. Um, we used to many back people um, <laughs> of passing ships, but those um, ships aren't passing Pitcairn like they used to, and so that is a bit of a challenge. We have um, signed up with the with an agreement with the French Polynesian uh, authorities, and uh, if it's a very serious situation, then they do send up uh, one of their navy ships. Okay, thank you. Do you see a young man back there who must be a little bit homesick? <laughs> DB. Well, I, he hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> he was just waving like crazy. Um, Paul. Paul is there. Okay, Tony says, I will see you on your birthday. How do you like that? Okay. Tony. Okay, that's a message from Tony. Just got Paul coming up. Okay, hey. How you all doing? Hello, We're everyone. We're doing great. Great to see you. Look at that necklace. Boy, Neiman Marcus would have a field day with that. <laughs> okay, when's your birthday, Paul? Paul, when's your birthday? April. April. Tony, yep. you're planning to be there in April? I am. Okay, get ready for a party. Have everybody uh, start baking that cake right now. Yep. Okay. Uh, good to see you, everybody. Okay. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now that um, Tony's coming back to Pitcairn, uh, people want to know how many tourists and visitors generally visit Pitcairn at any one time. Well, it tends to vary on that. Um, we're trying to encourage more tourists to come to Pitcairn. I'll have to check on the statistics on that. Um, but I think that uh, um, at any one time, they, if, they, if they do travel on the supply ship, there's room for up to about 12 tourists at a time. So, so all of you guys there sitting in the room, we, we encourage all of you guys to come. Not all, of it, not all at once, of course. Okay. 
I don't know why not. <laughs> we could have our next uh, Bounty Pitcairn Conference on Pitcairn. Uh, and they all, yes, doesn't that sound like a good idea? Uh, and then they want to know where, where do the tourists stay? Well, currently, uh, most uh, tourists, they, we've got homestay facilities. You stay with, uh, um, in a home. Somebody would provide you with bed and breakfast. There's two, I think, three homes or two, two or three houses which are available for rent. Otherwise, it's mostly homestay. Okay. Now, when I was there, there was um, Thursday's home. And it didn't look like it was ready for visitors. I assume that everything has been corrected. <laughs> Do you well, unfortunately, it? this our uh, Christian's home is uh, no longer there. There's I some know. rocks that. Uh, I'm just teasing. I know that. I, I know. <laughs> okay. This uh, this is a philosophic question. This is serious. What are your hopes and dreams for the future of Pitcairn and its community? What, what do you oh, hope you got, for? Tell me to pull the hairs out of my head. <laughs> well, you have a whole room full of people to draw on. So what, um, what do you think, Mike? What would you say? Well, you know, I believe that whatever you want is possible and most of the folks sitting in the room here probably don't know what my dreams are, so they'll find out pretty soon. Uh, my dreams is for Pitcairn to survive. I know this is a challenge because the population is uh, growing older, and so am I and everybody else, and there's hardly any younger people growing up to, uh, to take over. I believe that we can do it, and one of the things that we're trying to do at the moment is to uh, put together a, a repopulation policy. And hopefully this would encourage <laughs> encourage people to uh, to come to Pitcairn and hopefully to stay. Okay, where um, where is the, um, uh, the the project aimed at to repopulate? Uh, where where do you hope to um, to get these uh, these new people to live on Pitcairn? From New Zealand, New Australia, worldwide as a haven for um, refugees who are leaving some oppressed nation? What, um, you know, what, what do you intend to draw on? Well, we're hoping to draw uh, people who have particular skill sets. We're not saying that we're excluding everybody else, but we're hoping to draw, you know, key people that we would like um, on the island, such as lawyers and uh, engineers and electricians and uh, you know, a, a, a whole, you know, swag of uh, skill sets. But this doesn't mean that we're excluding anybody. And uh, in particular, we would like to encourage our own people to consider moving back here. And uh, so, you know, Pitcairn is here if you want to come. You're we're welcome. There, <laughs> They're welcoming you back home again. Um, what are your concerns and fears as related to the future of Pitcairn? Well, I personally don't have any fears at all. You know, you can concentrate on, on the negative aspects. I'm not doing that. I believe that it's all positive. I believe we can do it if we want to. And uh, it's up to the people if, uh, if they want this place to survive. It is possible. I believe that. Okay, good. Um, now a, um, a very down-to-earth question. How is electricity generated now? Well, it's still the uh, generated by diesel power. We've actually increased the uh, number of hours per day from 10 hours to um, 14 hours. And uh, we've seen an, a, a significant improvement in terms of uh, fridges and freezers. They, uh, you know, they are, the food in there is lasting a lot longer. And uh, so uh, that's one of the positive things about electricity. But we are looking at um, solar power. This is one of the projects that the British government is looking at. and. Uh, I know we've been talking about this for a number of years, but um, uh, this is one of the things we're looking at is solar energy for the future. Okay. Um, on the same subject, are there limitations on the number and type of appliances that can be used? Um, well, there is a limit on um, instant water heaters because uh, the power 
the, the generators that we've got here, of course, they are limited. And uh, of course, if we do get bigger um, uh, generators here, they, they will cost more to run, more fuel costs. So we do have a limit on that. But apart from that, there hasn't been any significant problems in folks loading down the generators. So, uh, so really to answer that question, it's not really any limits at this present time. Okay, great. And here is something that uh, is for those who do the crafts. Are you going to make any more <laughs> trick boxes in the future? I'm going to have to throw this question out to the audience. Okay, that's great. Oh, I, I'm told that there's someone making one right now. So, um, mm, place your orders. Do you hear that? Okay. Uh, we'll stay right on top of that. Um, another question, very interesting. Can you tell us something about how history is remembered on Pitcairn? Uh, particularly topics like Bly, the mutiny. Um, how, how is it taught to the children? How is it passed down generation to generation? And, and how is it remembered? Well, you know, personally, um, I didn't grow up being at all interested in, in Pitcairn's history, which is very sad. And it's only recently that I sort of taken up to, uh, to learning history. And I'm not quite too sure, and, and I know that the audience in, in the room here might uh, uh, might shoot me down at this, but I'm not too sure if we, in a general case, are his, interested in the history at all. What do you think? Um, I'm told that this is wrong, but you know, um, I think in, I think generally we weren't interested in history um, in a general sense. I'm not saying that this is true of all. You know, there are some that's uh, very interested in history. But personally, I've only taken up an interest in history in the last two years or so, and I, and, uh, but, you know, I could be, I'm only speaking for myself, you know, I have to let others speak on that. Okay, so, so it's uh, not established whether you believe in passing this history down generation to generation. Oh, well, I do actually believe in passing it down to, uh, and I know Meralda will speak on this tomorrow, and I know that she's a great advocate in towards, uh, you know, promoting the, the history of Pitcairn, and uh, which I support. And uh, I know that there are others within the community who have uh, taken up interest in history as well for Pitcairn. Okay. Um, one of the things I asked you, uh, particularly topics like Bly and the mutiny, um, we have a, a very dear member of the Pitcairn Island study group in the, the UK study group, uh, who is Morris Bly, and he's of course a descendant from Captain Bly, and um, he's, uh, you know, a, a very dear friend of uh, Pitcairn's, and uh, you know, after um, 250 years, let bygones be bygones. <laughs> uh, is it the same feeling there's no enmity um, about the, uh, the situation, the mutiny, the mutiny situation? Well, personally, I do not believe in holding grudges against anyone. You know, this took place over 200 years ago. And, you know, if we can't get over it 200 years later, then we've got a problem. So uh, I don't see any problem with uh, okay. the blind That's it. and Christian. I agree. <laughs> very good, very good. Like the kids say today, get over it. <laughs> okay. Um, another question. How frequently does the Claymore 2 visit Pitcairn? Well, it makes four trips from New Zealand uh, every year annually. It makes four trips from New Zealand. And then in between times, it makes at least two trips uh, between Pitcairn and Mangareva. And it is those two trips in particular that most people choose to travel uh, to put on, um, unless you would like to to spend 14 days or so uh, traveling from New Zealand to Pitcairn. Okay, and uh, do you happen to know the cost for a round trip fare? Oh, yes, I do actually. The round trip cost for tourists, it's, I believe it's, now let me think, it's about, it's 4,000 New Zealand dollars, I understand. For a round trip fare. Now, is that from Mangareva or from, um, uh, from New Zealand? This is from Mangareva to Pitcairn and back again, so that's a round trip. 
Okay, all right. Uh, now, we spoke before about how visitors are lodged on Pitcairn and their private homes that they stay in, uh, and you said it's usually bed and breakfast. Well, where might they eat uh, otherwise? Did I? Well, it's a bed, breakfast, lunch, and you get breakfast, lunch, dinner, and laundry, and uh, I know most folks would tend to take you out for tours and walkabouts and things like that, so you get all that thrown in. So it's, a, it's basically, it's a full, you get the full works. Well, you just wait a minute. I'm going over to pack and <laughs> come and visit you. Um, how is the island making progress in adopting wind energy? Well, we have decided uh, to review this and to have a look at the, as I mentioned earlier, solar energy, uh, because okay. the, the cost of producing energy from solar power is appears to be uh, competitive nowadays with wind energy. So we've decided not to go ahead with wind energy at this stage. Okay. And what is the best time of year to visit Pitcairn? Any time of the year, we've got an open arm, but if you're looking in terms of the weather, I would suggest around uh, you know December where it's nice and warm. And uh, this time of the year, you do get the, the wind and the, wet, the weather is, gets a bit rough, but still, still a pleasant day today. But any time of the year, but mostly in summertime, I would recommend. Okay, that's good. Now, um, somebody wrote this question. I think it's very interesting. Uh, I believe Pitcairn brings many goods ashore in small shipping containers. If that is so, <laughs> Pitcairn's sister island does not have that method. Would you be willing to offer advice to Norfolk Island on that operation? It works for you, do you think it would work for them? We might be able to come over to the Norfolk and, uh, and show them how it's done. Any Norfolk Island is there. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, when this question was handed to me, it said, to Cookie from Ron Edwards. And I said, Cookie, who's Cookie? And he said, Mike, if you refer to him as Mike, he's not even going to answer, but you call him Cookie and he knows who he is. Correct? Great name, well, I love it. Hey, yeah, hey Ron. Uh, yes, that is correct. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I get uh, this name Cookie used in official emails as well from, from uh, officials from the UK and I, and I'm left wondering, well, you know, even they use my nickname as well, Cookie. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, Ron is planning to move to uh, Norfolk with his wife. They're building a home there now. And uh, I think that's especially why he wanted to know if uh, container goods could be um, shipped there and, and unloaded there. Great idea. And uh, Leslie explained to us before uh, that that was that that is done now and uh it's a marvelous idea saves a lot of um well he said saves a bag of flour being ripped open and falling into the sea on its way uh, to pitcairn um any thoughts on how the population on pitcairn can be and still maintain a sustainable community other than um, repopulating the island, as you mentioned before, anything else that you can think of? And, and please ask, you know, feel free to uh, ask your assemblage there um, if, they, if they have any ideas of how um, a sustainable community can, can stay. Let me turn to them and see if they've got any ideas. Any thoughts? I mean, you mentioned something before with uh, solar energy. Great idea for a place that has, you know, sunshine a good part of the year. No other, I'm hearing no some, other thoughts? I'm hearing some from the, from the background. Okay. And uh, quite a number of people uh -huh. said, what is the current number of people living on Pitcairn? Yes. Can somebody guess? Okay. 56 at the moment. Last count, it's about 56. 
56, okay. That's, boy, it's better than when I was there. That's great. Yeah, so who won the prize? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how many under 30 years of age? Besides you, of course. <laughs> now, now. No, I, did you hear that? How many, how many under 30 years of age are living on the island? I hear in the side of my ears that there's three, about three. <laughs> there's two or one in their room. Hmm. Okay. Two? Yeah. There's, there's, there's two or three plus the children. Okay. All right. And most of the children go off island for um, higher education? I, I didn't get that. But I think you, you asked about the children, most of the children probably going off the island, I think. Yes. Do um, most of the children go off island for their uh, higher education? I mean, I know you have a wonderful school there, but um, for high school, college? Do they go yes, off that island? Is, that is, yeah, that is correct. Uh, we've got Ralph um, Pugh. He's gone off to New Zealand. He left, um, oh, two, three months ago, I think, on the, on the Claymore. Uh -huh. And I understand he's uh, fitting in quite nicely in New Zealand. That's great. That's very nice. Um, we're going to uh, do a little bit of question and answer with the people in the audience. However, they're going to come up to me first, if they have something to say, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll get right back to you. So if you have something you want to say to the pit carnage, please come here. Come on up. Oh, oh yeah, Tony is coming out of his shell, and he's going to say something. <laughs> Okay. Okay, people are coming here and come mask. I'm good, thank you. Uh, face the camera so they can see you and talk into the mic. Right here, do you have You're talking to everybody on the island. Uh, we would like we would like to say hello to Daphne and Keen, and they recently just left the U.S. back to the island. What the way y'all are? What's in y'all are doing? And what's in y'all are can cook for our wackle and our dinner mola. Alan, <laughs> we got Alan ya too. Yole all look good, and we'll catch up with Yole all later. Here. Thank you, Margaret. Okay, Marie. Hello, sis, and Ken, and Paul. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Wish you were here. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye. Marie wishes you were here, and we wish we were there. <laughs> Come on, Jackie. Uh, hello, all y'all. So good to see y'all today. And hi, Dylan and Caleb. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> um, really good uh, for see y'all. Um, everybody really enjoying it, yeah? But uh, sounds like I'm not going to need to do my talk tomorrow because all the questions I'm going ask see all I mean, answer tomorrow. <laughs> so we catch y'all later. Jack, you're doing just swell. You're still right there. All right, thank you, Jack. Come on, Melva. I cough with I ya. Cough with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you all in about three weeks. Okay? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. Yeah. Okay. And guess who just showed up on our shores? <laughs> guess who, we were so excited to hear that he's here. Here's DB. 
Hello, Hello. Hello. what away? way? Good to see you all, eh? Okay, I'll camera down here. Well, I not know. Here's the camera. Hey, 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 All right, hurry. Hey, hey, for you not being fetched down, sir, we all see it. Well, because no, yeah. Because <laughs> he got too much yet. Okay. Tom, come Hi, Good to see you. <laughs> hello. I'd like to say hello to Tom and Betty. Uh, this is Tom Nagel from Fargo, North Dakota. I hope you remember me. Uh, I was, I made it to the conference and I just was in Southern California visiting my daughter Julie who was with me when I was on the island and uh, about a year ago she had my first grandchild. So I was down visiting them and I hope to return to Pitcairn within the next couple of years. I'm trying to convince my wife. Oh, well, thanks Tom. We, we look forward to seeing you back. That would be great. And we have fond memories of our hot, hot air balloon ride uh, with you and the helicopter ride, so we sure haven't forgotten. Well, I'd like to be the first one in the world to fly a balloon on Pitcairn, but I'm not sure how that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anybody else from the audience before I ask my next question of them? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Steve has something to say. And I bet I know who's going, who he's going to talk to. <laughs> of course. Hi, is Nola there? Is Nola in the audience? Yes. Hi, hey, Nola. This is Steve. How are you? Fine. <laughs> is Reynolds there? No, he's not. Oh, well, you tell him I said hello, too. We miss you guys. Everybody here knows who you are, and they miss you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Nola. Oh, and Herb Ford. <laughs> uh, Cookie, is the, do I see Mavis there? Is, is uh, no, Herb, she's, um, if we turn the, the laptop around the other way, you'll see her down in the garden. Um, but she sends her love. She's there, but she's not, um, she's not oh, in the camera no. range. I just wanted to ask Mavis if I come back, will she wash my clothes again? <laughs> I'm sure she will. Well, I'll take over her, but it's well done yet. We love you, Mavis. We're glad you had a nice birthday. Bye-bye. Now, one thing Bye, that... Man. Okay. One thing that everybody wanted to know is to please explain to us a typical day, particularly yours, Mike, on Pitcairn, because we're going to speak to Maralda tomorrow, and we're going to talk to her about a typical day, which will probably go in a little different direction than yours. So could you explain to us how your day goes, what you do when you get up, and how you, uh, how you conduct your day? <coughs> OK, this is interesting. Um, first thing I do is I try and get out of bed. Most folks do. Always a good idea. And uh, and being the mayor, I have an office which I attend to um, mostly three times a week. So I uh, um, would attend that sometimes three, four hours, maybe five hours a day, three times a week. And then I'm also working in the uh, engineering department, mechanical engineering department. And so sometimes, maybe for the rest of the day, remainder of the day, I work in that. 
and uh, I'm not much of a gardener, as most folks would uh, agree with. So, um, but I do like to spend some time outdoors and uh, mowing the lawn. And a typical day may be getting firewood and uh, mowing the lawns and just uh, keeping the island going. And how many times a year does the sh uh, a supply ship come that you have to go down and um, help unload? Um, well, I uh, mentioned this earlier, a supply ship arrives about four times every year from, mm -hmm. from New Zealand. And uh, as I think I mentioned earlier, it's arriving this Thursday, Thursday. morning. Yeah. So, uh, okay, and everybody goes down there to, um, to help with the uh, effort? Now, how do you get the containers um, up to the top? That hill of difficulty was very difficult for me. Um, and those containers weigh a lot more than I do. How do they get up there? <laughs> well, we've got machinery now that can handle those uh, containers. I'm not sure whether the, the road was concreted when you were last here, but the, no. uh, the road is concreted now. And uh, we've got machinery, a, a, a Caterpillar uh, loader that brings it up the hill. Uh, the way it works is that we've got a boat crew, they go out to the Claymore, uh, unload the, the cargo, bring that ashore. We've got a shore team that uh, handles all that out on the dock side. And the, uh, the, the loader uh, brings the cargo up to uh, the edge or at the, the local store. And we've got a team of people at those two places that uh, would unload the containers and tend to sort things from here. So we've got people all over the place organizing and unloading of the supply ship. It's not everybody down at the landing, it's uh, in various places on the island. Okay. Uh, how many cruise ships are you expecting this coming year? Uh, well, if I close my window, I check my files, I think it's, um, I've got a file on my computer, I think it's about, what is it? It's about eight or nine, I think. Well, I can confirm that for you tomorrow, if you like. Okay, please, yes, we'd like to know that. And uh, of the ships that are coming, how many are likely to uh, land uh, at, at Pitcairn rather than just having uh, the Pitcairners come uh, on board the ship? Well, the, the smaller cruise ships, uh, the ones that uh, would carry about 120, 130 people, they, carry the, they have their own Zodiacs, and those are almost guaranteed landing, almost, I say. Whereas the, the larger cruise ships, it's very much dependent upon the weather, uh, both at the dockside and out at sea alongside the, the ship. So, uh, so the, the larger cruise ships, you can't always guarantee folks will get ashore from those. So if that's not the case, then we, we come out to meet them. Okay. Well, I think we've had a wonderful visit with you. One more question. Somebody in the back. Who's, who's okay. that in the background with the okay. hands up? Oh, yeah. What's oh, going okay. to happen now, we have some people who want to sing goodbye to you. So we will end this session. Come on, Marie. Oh, one question. Yost. Okay. <laughs> okay. As far as I want to say, uh, I think I see Miss Andrews at the end. Is it Miss Andrews over there? From the Sound of Music. Is it oh, yeah, Ju now, Julie I have Andrews. <laughs> I have been to the Island in 2007, and I wanted to come again, but I need a permit because I want to take my whole family. In the mic. Oh, did you see her? Sorry. Yeah, in the mic. In 2007, I have been to, island, to the island. I had a terrific holiday. I met some nice people. Um, I told the community I want to come back as soon as possible, but with my whole family. Until now, I didn't get any permit. And I want to know, ask you if you already know if the British government or the government in New Zealand changed their mind. I don't think we can deal with any of those political issues no, and no, visa no, issues it's, it's now. Not no, it's not no, no, I understand <laughs> that, but here we're. Just, uh, it's not 
Uh, basically, to answer your question in, in this regard, there is still child restrictions on, so uh, I won't go into all the politics of, in relation to that. I know it's controversial, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay. I've just been told that uh, just to keep trying and uh, best of luck. Okay. All right. We have a wonder. We have a wonderful ending to this conversation. Just wait, just a second, and. Uh, Come on. Over here. Okay. Just a moment. Y'all are going to be in for a big surprise because we call what away, but y'all could help us sing. Yeah, I mean, tell, we need y'all if we sing or some of us fee while we. Uh, we hardly all talk. Hey, let's sing. sing. Goodbye, you dear people. We look forward to chatting with you tomorrow uh, with Meralda. And um, we're thinking of you every minute. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Hey, John. <laughs> Is that...
Chris Johnson there? Mark Hunt there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, Chris. Yeah. 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 Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Okay. See you tomorrow. Lovely to see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye bye.